Have you ever wondered what a movie about a haunted tarot card deck would look like? Well, look no further as I present to you the 2024 movie Tarot that stars that guy from the Spider-Man movies. No, not that one. There we go. Taro has an IMDb rating of 4.8 out of 10 and a popularity of 284, mainly due to the fact that it's been out for a little while. Taro follows a group of college friends who decide to spend a weekend at a remote cabin in the Catskills. Among them is Haley, who has a keen interest in tarot card readings. While exploring the cabin in search of alcohol, because that's all that college-age kids tend to do, I guess, they stumble upon an old, ornate tarot card deck hidden in the basement, because that is also where I hide my haunted tarot cards in the basement. Ignoring the warnings about using someone else's tarot card deck, Haley decides to perform readings for each of her friends because it's always a great idea to do that. As the readings unfold, each card drawn seems to eerily predict a dark and gruesome fate for the person it represents. Initially, the friends laugh it off as some mere superstition, but soon strange and terrifying events begin to occur. What may those be, you ask? Well, Elise returns back to her dorm, only to see that she has a new roommate who lives in the attic. And no, it's not that one causing her to fall and die because the most dangerous thing to happen to the human body is about a five foot drop. And due to being incapacitated by said drop, Elise is killed by the super spooky ghost from the tarot cards. One by one, the friends start experiencing horrifying incidents that mirror the predictions of their tarot readings. Lucas gets chased down by the hermit character while taking a midnight stroll through the subway station, and after hiding in some abandoned rail cars, he hops out to find that one of them is not so abandoned, as it proceeds to turn him into a new piece of graffiti on the actual abandoned rail cars. And now, everyone begins their favorite part of every horror movie, where the police question the gang and they have no better explanation than haunted tarot cards. The group quickly realizes that they have unleashed a malevolent force trap within the cursed tarot cards, and desperate to escape their foretold fates, they try to destroy the deck, but their efforts are in vain. The evil entity seems to grow stronger with each passing moment, feeding off their fear and despair. As the body count rises, the remaining friends must unravel the mystery of the cursed deck and find a way to break the cycle of doom. They discover that the deck once belonged to a powerful witch who used it to trap the souls of her enemies. And why would the witch do this, you may ask? Well, she predicted that the count of her village would lose not only his newborn child, but his wife as well. And unfortunately, she was too good at her job and was correct. So, as a sign of revenge, they murdered the witch's daughter, because that is a perfectly reasonable response. To stop the curse though, the friends must perform a ritual to release the trapped souls and banish the evil spirit. After meeting with the woman who drops all the exposition, on the way back, the group stops at a bridge and while they're sitting on said bridge, a spooky spirit writes the word run on a window, and since the spooky spirit is definitely not the one that's going to kill you, Madeline decides she's going to do exactly what it says, and gets out of the car and makes a run for it down the spooky bridge. And bonus points to who can guess what happens to her next, that's right, she dies. And now Paxton wants nothing to do with this entire situation, so what does he do? He splits from the group, because that works in every situation ever and he decides that he's just going to go back home as simple as that <laughs> nothing else but as soon as he gets back to his apartment he starts hearing all these spooky noises because he's being followed by the fool but now paxton gets trapped in the elevator as the fool closes in and he is never to be seen again but luckily the gang makes it back to the house and finds the original tarot cards and they're just going to burn them and get rid of them and that's the end of the movie not really, because the cards are fireproof, what? So they call in the old mysterious lady to figure out how to break the curse. The old lady comes back to help them and does the ritual to break the curse, only it doesn't matter because she gets absolutely bodied by the spirit of the witch. Paige then gets separated from both Grant and Haley and decides to hide in possibly the worst place you could ever think of, that being a box. And what's inside said box? Well, that doesn't matter, because the box just so happens to be a prop of the magician's magic show, and let's just say, the magic's a little too real when it comes to Paige, as he cuts the box in half with Paige inside. Only this isn't one of the trick of the eyes, he just decided to skip the whole magic part and just cut everything in half, just there's a lot of cleanup afterwards unfortunately. And now Haley gets the idea of, what if she just reads the horoscope of the witch and turns the curse on her? And, get, and Grant gets yanked out of the window because it looks really funny. And now, 
Haley gets back to the cards and decides that she's going to give the whole big speech about how she knows that the witch was hurt and she never really allowed herself to properly heal after the loss of her daughter and how Haley knows the exact feeling that she's feeling because she experienced the same feeling of losing someone close to her. Only the two situations are completely different. Haley's mother died from cancer and the witch's daughter was murdered because she did her job. These are two very different things. It's not like Haley has a vendetta against cancer and that's the reason that she has this whole revenge plot. Pan cancer didn't kill the witch's daughter. It was a bunch of very angry morons that killed the witch's daughter. But after having read the witch's cards, her card comes up as death, which it doesn't mean that it's the end, but it could mean that it's the end of the curse. But it, it just it just means death in this situation. And now this gets kind of confusing because this implies that you can just technically read the cards of people when they're not really there. I mean, it brings up a bunch of different questions, but it doesn't matter because the card lands on death. And that means that the witch is dead and now everyone gets to go home happy. Well, at least we're left here to think so because the cards go up in flames. And now we get this wonderful shot of Grant and Haley beginning to make the long journey back only for a car to approach them as they're going down the road. And they get all worried because it's part it could be part of Grant's horoscope. But nope, it's just Paxton because he's alive, I guess. And why? Because plot, I guess. I mean, I kid you not, the whole reason that he's alive is because during his horoscope reading, it was said that he would come through for his friends in an unexpected way. So I guess it never mattered how screwed he was, he was safe from the very beginning, plot armor to the max. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And that is the movie Tarot. So allow me to read this movie's horoscope and see what comes up in the cards. So for the plot, I gave it a 1.5. It has a good premise. I don't understand why Paxton just got plot armored. I guess it was just because he was a comedic relief and they really didn't want to kill off the comedic relief, but it was just really weird that he just kind of got plot armored from the very beginning. And I feel like all the bones are there to make this a good movie with tarot cards. It, it just feels like it wasn't done properly. I will say that this movie was rated PG-13, so it's kind of made for a younger audience, kind of. This is probably one of those horror movies where, well now kids are growing up a lot sooner than normal but you ever just think back to when you were like 12 or 13 and you've never seen a horror movie before and one of the first movies you watch it's one that your parents allow you to go see it's the pg-13 but it's a horror pg-13 movie so there's no gore there's no like nudity which i don't like nudity in movies anyways but there's also no real swearing and it's very tame as a horror movie that's what this feels like. It feels like one of those entry level horror movies for your younger audience, which maybe that's what they were going for since they got the guy from Spider-Man. But that's kind of what this felt like to me. It really felt like that entry kind of horror movie, not one that diehards are gonna go watch and it's gonna become their newest favorite movie. It's just kind of like, hey, do you wanna see a spooky movie? Well, here you go. So 1.5 for me out of the three isn't bad. For acting, I give it a one. Everyone was okay. That nothing really blew me out of the water like yeah i had the guy from the spider-man movies but he just kind of played the same character that he does in the spider-man movies which hey if you find that this works best for your career go for it you can just be basically the new jack black kind of but jack black also kind of reached out into different movies at different point of his career but i don't know it just kind of felt like you picked him up right out of the spider-man movie and went what if you were in a kind of horror movie and then they just kind of put him in here everyone else was very just what you would expect from acting it like i said if you go into this expecting to see emmy nominated performances you're gonna be disappointed it's just it's acting it's not anything insane it's not the worst either it's not lanterns lane bad but it's it's mid it, it gets one it, it didn't get the 1.5 i just kind of felt like giving it the one because it didn't do anything for me so it gets the one for me on acting for the cinematography i couldn't go too high on it there were some effects in it that looked cool but so much of this movie is just super super dark and i understand why they do it they do it to try to make this darkness and kind of make it feel this void where you don't know what's in there you can kind of see the eyes and some of the shots of some of the monsters but it takes away a lot of it because i'll explain a little bit more when i get to the next rating on this but it's basically kind of like that scene that everyone got really mad at in game of thrones where 
they're like look it's this really cool battle scene but you can't see 90 percent of it because it's too dark it's a lot like that where i feel like if they had just not focused so hard on doing that they could have shown some of the better points of this movie but it is what it is they didn't really generate too much of a feeling of dread whenever they did that so it kind of fell flat at the same time so for the cinematography it's just going to get the one point for me and for the bonus point it's getting half of the bonus point and the reason i wanted to reference this in the cinematography and going a little bit more was the reason it got the half of the point for me was the monsters did look cool in the moments where you could see them some of them were really badly cgi i will say that but the heiress at the very beginning the one that uh kills the girl with the ladder that was a really good costume and character design it looked like they really tried hard on making that character look as spooky as they could and at even some points the witch kind of had that spooky feel about her but at the same time they overload portions of it was cgi the bridge monster was so heavily cgi'd the hermit wasn't seen as much as i feel like he should have been i feel like that was another one that they really could have leaned into and made him look creepy and spooky and really gone out all out for that but they just relied too much on cgi at that point they did the same thing for the devil and for the it's just referenced as death in imdb but the two that were associated for grant and Haley, the full costume looked really cool it was creepy it also had the same kind of jovial feeling that a court jester might have and so there was a lot of potential there they just it felt like one of those situations where somebody hands you an exorbitant amount of money and they're like here's 20 million dollars to go make a movie you're gonna want to use cgi a lot of people are going to want to use CGI because making practical effects sucks. It's probably not fun. It probably takes a lot of time to make practical effects, but you pay somebody a couple grand and they can make you some CGI render models and you just throw that in your movie and you're done. So I feel like they kind of took the easy way out. I, I really feel like they could have done so much more with this, but they just kind of fumbled the bag a little bit when it came to the monsters, and that's why it doesn't get as much of a higher rating from me. I still gave it the 0.5 because there was potential there. There was potential to make good monsters out of this, but it just kind of fumbled, so 0.5 for me. And if you don't want to sit here and you don't want to add up all these numbers, don't worry, I got you with the 1.5 for the plot, the one for the acting, the one for the cinematography, and the 0.5 for the bonus. We are leaving out of here with a flat 4 out of 10 rating. If we reference that to the imdb rating it was a 4.8 out of 10 so they're pretty close i have a tendency to go a little bit under the imdb rating not because i don't like imdb i just try to be a little more strict on some of the movies that i rate but it's not a terrible movie like i said the thought that comes to my mind most with this movie is entry level horror if you have a 12 year old or a 13 year old and you are a horror fanatic and your whole room and house and everything is just covered with all this horror stuff and they're like i want to i want to watch the movies that you watch put this movie on it's got enough spooky stuff to make them be like oh that's scary but it's not going to be anything that's too heavy for a younger audience so it's just very entry level which is why i'm not going super hard on it it's not trying to be this genre breaking horror movie it's just here's a movie that you can put in front of your younger kids. I say younger, I'm not talking about eight year olds here. We're not trying to scar them that bad, but someone who's just kind of getting into horror movies who may not be all the way into like the, the heavier stuff like Terrifier and stuff like that. So it's not bad. It's not great either. The bones are there. It had the bones, but it's very entry level horror. But thank you to anybody who decided to stop by, listen, slash watch this. I am trying to get back into making more videos. I've been very busy at work recently, so that's why the uploads have been a little few and far between. But I'm still going to try to stay on the YouTube making grind, but we'll just have to see how that goes. But at the same time, if you've seen this movie already, let me know what you thought of it. Did you think it was fun? Did you enjoy the fact that they basically copy and pasted the guy from Spider-Man? Maybe that's your favorite character in all the cinematic universes. And if so, that's awesome. I hope you enjoy that. But if you thought this movie was good, let me know in the comments. If you thought it sucked, let me know in the comments. If you think this video sucks, I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. But thank you all for stopping by and listening or watching. If you enjoyed it, 
like the video, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next review of whatever I decide to review. So, adios.